All right, so I've already covered a lot of the major design changes coming to the S25 series in this video right here. But today, there's still plenty to unpack, especially when it comes to the camera and a few other exciting updates. Let's kick things off with the camera because there's a lot to talk about here. 91 Mobiles just dropped the full specs for the Ultra module, but first, let's talk about the main camera module. Now, here's where the S25 Ultra might surprise us. Back in December 2023, Samsung teased a brand new 200 megapixel sensor with a one inch sensor size. I know some of you might be thinking, that's old news, but trust me, Samsung tends to announce new tech long before it actually shows up in their products. Case in point, the 200 megapixel sensor, the ISOCELL HP1, was introduced in September 2021, but we didn't see it in the S22 Ultra until 2022. So it's totally possible this new sensor could be hidden in the S25 Ultra when it drops. If it makes it into the S25 Ultra, we're looking at three major upgrades. First, low light performance will be much improved, thanks to the sensor being 160% larger than the one in the S24 and S23 Ultra. Now it still won't be quite as good as the Xiaomi 14 Ultra, which also packs a 1-inch sensor, but the bigger sensor in the S25 Ultra should still offer a big boost compared to its predecessors. Second, this sensor could bring 4x in-sensor zoom. This would be way better than digital zoom, because you're using a real portion of the sensor to capture the image at full resolution. That's basically like having a 4x optical zoom module built into the main camera. The S24 Ultra only had a 2x crop zoom, so this would be a huge step up. Third, the larger sensor will give us better depth of field, which means portrait shots will look even more natural, and in some cases, you might not even need to use portrait mode to get that blurred background effect. Now, moving on to the ultra-wide camera. The leak from 91 Nobles shows a much larger f 1.7 aperture, compared to the f 2.2 on the current model, plus a new 50 megapixel sensor, up from 12 megapixel. The best part, it now supports pixel binning, meaning your photos will still be 12.5 megapixel by default, but you can switch to 50 megapixel whenever you need that extra sharpness. In low light, pixel binning will help by making each pixel four times larger, which means better low light performance overall. Honestly, I never thought the S24 Ultra's ultra-wide camera was bad, but these specs make the S25 Ultra's ultra-wide sound like it could be one of the best on any phone, possibly even beating the Xiaomi 14 Ultra's ultra-wide, which was super impressive. The Xiaomi 14 Ultra's 50 megapixel module had a similar sensor size, but with a slower f 1.8 lens. Now moving on to the telephoto module. Unfortunately, it looks like Samsung is keeping it the same for both the S25 Ultra and S25 Plus. We're sticking with the 10 megapixel 3x zoom and the 50 megapixel 5x zoom. Honestly, this is a bit of a letdown. While the 5x module on the S24 Ultra was an improvement over the older 10x, it still wasn't great at longer zoom ranges like 20 or 30x. It's a bit disappointing that Samsung isn't bringing back the 10x zoom. But here's some good news. If you watched our previous S25 leaks video, you know that the S25 Ultra is rumored to come with the Snapdragon 8 Elite chip. One of its coolest features is that it integrates A photo enhancements for real-time improvements. So even though Samsung isn't upgrading the telephoto hardware, I think the eye-powered zoom from the Snapdragon 8 Elite chip, combined with the upgraded ultra-wide and possibly that bigger 1-inch main sensor, will make the S25 Ultra one of the best, if not the best, camera phones of 2025. So, what do you think of these new leaks, the camera upgrades, and the colors? Drop your thoughts in the comments, and don't forget to subscribe for more updates. I'll catch you in the next one. Until then, take care.